Good morning. Here we are uh, looking at the compost pile. And this compost pile has been turned four times. This is our compost that we were looking at earlier in earlier videos that we created for boot camp. So before boot camp, I had the videos out here to show you the, th the materials that we had gathered. And we had two compost piles. We had one that I made before boot camp so that it would be up to temperature. So that when my students came, they could look at it and turn it and know how to do that process. And then we had the uh, bucket of materials. We had 10 buckets. One bucket, which meaning it would be 10% of the high nitrogen, which was peas. And then we had uh, three buckets of greens and six buckets of the the wood chip type material. And then we made two piles. But what we've got here is I have combined those two piles together into one compost. And the reason I did that is the piles were too small. I couldn't um, get up to temperature and maintain the temperature for long enough. In other words, it wasn't hot enough long enough. Our minimum temperature needs to be 131 degrees, and the time frame is for three days for it to stay hot enough to to kill the pathogens and the weed seeds. And the a 10-bucket pile simply was not enough. So my first pile was about a 15-bucket pile. The second pile was a 10-bucket pile. And as you remember, the reason I was making a 10-bucket pile is to see how small of a pile I could make and still have it make a good compost. And what I learned is... The the 15 bucket pile was too small. I turned it a couple of times and it just wouldn't heat up again. And the 10 bucket pile wasn't enough. It, um, it, it did get up to temperature, but then the second time I turned it, it never came back up to 131. So I combined both piles together. Now I have a big enough mass that I have turned this a couple of times as a mass together. And so... That it turned into a 25 bucket pile just because I added my 15 and my 10. So now my 25 bucket pile seems like it is staying up to temperature and working. So I will probably turn this maybe three more times and then it will probably be done and stop heating up. I haven't been getting the really hot temperatures of like 160. And above, as you can see here, I've already shown you, it's at 140 degrees here today. Hopefully that's focused in there and you can see that. But we're at 140 and maybe a half a degree, maybe 141. And depending on how deep you push this into the pile and how far we pull it out and we put it in different places, it will be different temperatures in different spots. So let's just try to move it over six inches, and we're going to go in about six inches deep, and we'll see where we are. Because I pulled it out, it has just dropped down to around 130, but it's very slowly climbing back up. So you always want to find the hottest part in the pile in order to take your temperature so that your temperature is good. So my conclusion from the the... The material choices that I have available to me, uh, you know, a 20 to 25 bucket pile is probably the smallest pile I can make. I don't really like to make the small piles because once I get done, I want a lot of compost. So we need, you know, a lot of stuff. So just remember, when you're making compost, one of the number one things to have a successful compost pile is to have enough mass to start with, you need total weight, total volume, which creates mass. You need about 25 gallon buckets, a minimum, to have enough uh, to create your, your pile. It was fun to do the 10 bucket pile, and I was thrilled because the 10 bucket pile, it did get up uh, pretty hot, but the second time I turned it, it never came up above 131. And I thought, well, I'm just going to combine these two piles. No, it's a bad idea to start combining piles 
because you have an old compost. This one was, uh, well, maybe two weeks older. The first one was about, the 15 bucket pile was probably a week and a half to two weeks older than the, uh, than the 10 bucket pile. So, if you know, it's not the best way to do it. But I did it this way anyway as a way to save what was happening. And it is saving it because at this point with the turns I've had in this, most of the material has been in the middle already. My next turn, all the material will have been in the center of the pile, which is what you want. You need all the material to be in the center long enough, hot enough to kill the weed seeds. And then once this sits for a while, it's going to grow a lot of fungus. Now, let me just tell you uh, what we're going to do with this. I will turn this another two or three times until it doesn't get up to 130 degrees. Once it doesn't get up and stay above 131, then I will transfer this pile, and we will take it over here to the worm bin. And so I'll just put it in buckets. I'll just use the pitchfork. I'll fill up five-gallon buckets. I'll carry them right here where I'm walking right now. And then I will dump the, that compost on top of this worm bin. And the worms will eat it. So every bit of that material, unless it's a stick or a big wood chip, but most of that material will go through the innards of the worms. And the worms will eat it, and it will in, be in this compost chamber for maybe about a year. And that's how I, I manage my compost. I make the thermophilic compost, which means a hot compost that kills the weed seeds. And when it stops heating up, I put it on top of the worm chamber. And then it will settle down. It will go all the way to the bottom because I continually add material to the top. And then we cut the, uh, this off the bottom and the finished compost falls out of the bottom. So what you're seeing here on the bottom... Obviously, there's some weeds growing along the edge. You can ignore them. There's even some lettuces, volunteer lettuce growing in there, which is fun. But underneath there, down there in the shadows, is all the compost that's finished. We cut that off, and I've just left it there, and it is full of worms. I check it from time to time to make sure it's not uh, going stinky, because if it smelled bad, it would mean that it's anaerobic, but it has a very it has a pleasant smell or no smell, which is great. But this spring, we're going to take all of this out. We're going to um, create compost extract, and we're going to put this on the outside gardens. So in May and June, all of this will be gone. But between now and then, because see, it's February, so let's just count the month of March, April, May. So about three months, this is going to be growing more fungus. But it's been cut off for two months. So it's five months under here growing, maturing large amounts of fungus. And of course, we're talking about the beneficial fungus. And then we will make the compost extract. We will put that on the ground outside so that we have the, um, the, all the good microbes out there. And we're going to be able to grow fantastic, great food. I think this is the best compost I've ever made in my life. That's why I went to the trouble to make this elaborate worm bin. <coughs> and I'm just really hoping that this helps you to get some great worm compost extract onto your farm.